Hi, everyone. I'm Catherine Anaya, and welcome to the Women's Eye Podcast. This is where you are going to meet fascinating women who are leaving their mark, making a difference, and changing lives. This episode is brought to you by Casco Financial Group in Phoenix, Arizona. Catherine Scrivano is the president of Casco Financial Group, and she started her business to help people create financial strength to achieve their dreams. My guest today is the remarkable Gloria Feltz. Gloria is a best-selling author, speaker, international leadership expert, and former Planned Parenthood CEO and president. She just released a new book right here. It's called Intentioning, Sex, Power, Pandemics, and How Women Will Take the Lead for Everyone's Good. We'll talk about how this huge disruption of a pandemic has and can offer us a once in a lifetime opportunity to build back stronger with women at the center of the recovery. Gloria, welcome back to the Women's Eye podcast. It is so great to see you again. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be with you. Well, thank you so much. You know, it's been a while and so much has happened since I last saw you. I was trying to figure, I think it's been about four or five years. And I understand you are coming back from your first broken bone. Believe it or not, I've never had one. <laughs> what happened? And more importantly, how are you doing? I'm, do I'm doing great. The bone has long since healed, but it, 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 was, it was kind of funny that, uh, that I, I was hiking. I was in Arizona in January of 2020. And I was hiking and I tripped over some jagged little pebble of some sort. And I broke my wrist. I, I could tell, I knew exactly what had happened when it happened. And, and I, I, I later thought of it as being sort of a, 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 a symbol of what the rest of the year was going to be. It was like, oh, broken everything, you know, everything <laughs> that we ever thought was, <laughs> was going to be fine and dandy wasn't fine and dandy. And we had to learn to, to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Little did we know just how astronomical we would have to, you know, deal with these massive changes in our lives and, and astronomical the situation would be. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, some of those lessons, those unexpected lessons that we've all had to learn in the year and a half that, you know, we have been dealing with all of this. And for many of us, it's been an emotional roller coaster, I would say, you know, lots of ups, lots of downs trying to find the beauty and the grace in some of these very tough lessons. And I feel like you really are the perfect person to write a book about overcoming a big disruption, to come back stronger than ever, better than ever. And for those who don't know, I just wanna give them a little bit of some background about you. Uh, you grew up in a small Texas town, already a mother of three at 20 years old. You worked your way up with what you've said are no employable skills. You attended community college. You became the leader of Planned Parenthood. And among other things, you co-founded Take the Lead, which is an incredible, incredible journey, Gloria. I commend you for all that you have accomplished. So that's why I feel like you are such an appropriate person to be talking about overcoming a disruption such as a pandemic and all of life's other disruptions that come our way when we least expect it. So talk to me a little bit, because as I mentioned, you have this new book. Talk to me a little bit about intentioning and why you believe now is the opportunity for women to seize the moment that we can we can we cannot take a back seat now. What is the concept behind intentioning and how do we use it to magnify our talents? Well, to give you a little bit of background, Catherine, I started writing the book well before the pandemic probably a year or maybe two years before that, I had started interviewing women because I knew that I wanted to build a new set of leadership tools. I'm very practical. I like for my books to give people actionable tools that they can use, they can apply right away. And so I started interviewing women who I knew would be examples of various different leadership skills and tools that I wanted to share. So that was the original concept for the book. And I made up the word intentioning because I wanted to encourage women to answer a question that I had I had realized needs to be answered once you have no, once you have embraced the power that you have, because I've spent the last 10 years helping women know the power they have and embrace that power. And that was really the, the source of, of my previous book. But I realized that once you know the power that you have, the next question is the power to what? 
to what purpose, to what end are you going to use that power? And that is your intention. But I wanted to create it in the sense of an active verb. So I made up the word intentioning. I Googled, I, I looked everywhere. I looked in the thesaurus, I looked in the dictionary. I couldn't find exactly the right word. I knew it wasn't intention because that's a noun and it's, it's a wonderful word, but it sits there. Intentioning is an active verb. So that's the concept. Well, okay, enter pandemic. And suddenly I realized, you know what? I can't write just the book I had started out to write. I have to put, I have to put it all in context. And the context at that point then was, we are in a season of massive disruption. What we thought of as normal will never be again. But what that means is we're also in a season of rebirth, an opportunity to rethink. Because when things are chaotic, when things are disrupted, people have to open their minds to new ways of thinking. Organizations have to open the, the barriers of their structures to new ways of thinking. For example, aren't we both working out of our homes now? Mm -hmm. uh, isn't everybody, haven't we, haven't we learned that the kind of flexible hours and flexible time that women have been asking for for many years, now companies realize, you know what, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> people can people can have flexible time and do not only do their work but do it very well and be just as productive and maybe we don't need all that expensive real estate after all so you know you, you it's it's that kind of an opportunity we have all experienced an enormous amount of of hurt pain suffering uh grief i mean it's been a hard time and i don't want to in any way say that it, it hasn't been that greatly, I mean, a, a very, very difficult time, I think for yes. everybody, and particularly for those who have lost loved ones. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's been really tough. And of course, women lost jobs at a rate sometimes four times as often as men, particularly women of color. So there's that that we have to deal with. Well, there are so many levels, like you mentioned, that that we've had to deal with this. There has been that heartbreak, which I, I don't want to dismiss. There has been such a rude awakening for so many people. Women have had to shoulder sometimes the brunt of the burden of all of this. But you indicate that, yes, disruptions can be a good thing in some instances. And it, it sounds to me like you're saying, you know, it's all about our approach. It's it's all about the intention we set for ourselves. You know, sometimes I like to approach the day with, okay, what is my intention for today? So how do we all, or can we all just bounce back? Right, right. Well, so so we we have to take into account two the two massive disruptions that happened last year. And and we need to keep both of them in mind because it's very relevant to whether and how women will be able to achieve parity, I believe. So let me let me explain that too. So there is the, the coronavirus pandemic, which is pretty clear and obvious, and we always start there. But there also was the second pandemic of finally America realizing the kind of horrible racial injustices that have been going on since the beginning of the country and had finally risen to massive public awareness. And those two taken together really give us a sense of direction. Um, I, one of the things that I write a lot about in the book is, is how gender and racial justice and equality have to go forward together because they are very much intertwined and always have been, but we haven't always, we haven't always looked at it that way. And, and, and I really believe that, that all of the, you know, oppressions are pretty much joined at the head and we can, we can't, we can't fight them separately. We have to fight them together. We have to work, we have to work to, uh, to fix all of that together. So that's one thing I, and I included a chapter on what I believe is the company's corporate responsibility, frankly, to, um, to, to create a culture of inclusion for everybody. And that's a very important part of how women can move forward. But women are also in a great position to help move that forward. We have seen 
countries with women leaders do a much better job with COVID, for example. So it's like pretty obvious that in addition to that, we know that the business case is very clear that companies with more women in their leadership make more money. So, you know, I mean, there, there are a lot of things that, that are now in very stark relief. And with that then, to have, for women to have the tools and the thinking processes, it, it, I really believe a lot of is, a lot of it is about the thinking processes. You know, you can learn basic leadership skills. I don't have to teach you how to budget or do HR stuff or any of that. You can get that in a lot of places, but I do want to help you learn how to think as a leader needs to think. And for example, I start with the leadership intentioning tool, uncover yourself. Mm -hmm. Because what, what, what we've found in the research is that almost everybody, both men and women cover themselves in the workplace. In other words, we don't bring our full self. We don't let people see who, who we are deep down. Oftentimes we're, we're embarrassed about it. Who knows? I mean, there are all kinds of reasons. Women cover more than men and people of color, both genders cover more than, than, than either uh, white men or white women. So that's the first step. Great leaders know who they are. So that's the kind of like thinking process that I help people have to overcome the barriers that have been facing them and that have often set women back. Women are often, uh, I, I call it the, you know, it's the enemy in our heads. Uh, we've experienced so much bias. We've experienced so much of the negative attributes or aspects of how we get treated in the workplace that we step back or we bail out. Mm -hmm. Well, if we bail out, nothing will ever change. So you need to, you need to have the tools that will enable you to use the strengths that you bring to move yourself forward and to help mm -hmm. other women move forward with you. Well, you have been fighting for gender equality for years, and I had certainly felt like, and I, and I know many other people would probably agree that for the last couple of years, we've seen that fight for gender equality amplified, mm -hmm. even before the pandemic. Uh, you say we're in an unfinished revolution when it comes to gender equality. What, in your opinion, is it going to take to reach gender equality? Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to take two things. <clears throat> Excuse me. I guess I've been doing podcasts all day, so here I am. I, uh, it, I can relate. <laughs> the, yes, I'm sure you can. There are actually two things. All all social change has to be approached both from the bottom up and the top down. So from the bottom up, there there are there are things that women need to do for ourselves. One is we need to learn to appreciate the power that we do have and not feel powerless. We need to operate from, from our power, not from our fear. That's one. The, uh, the other thing that women need to do for ourselves is to join with other women because there is strength in partnering with other people. There's strength in working with, with other people and trying to go it alone is never going to be a long-term winning strategy. It's just too hard. So those are the things, some of the things that we women need to do for ourselves. So we, 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 we organize actually when we start joining with other women. We also have to do systems change. And the reason I think the pandemic can help us move farther ahead faster is exactly because of what we've been talking about, which is organizations and governments are going to have to think differently. We're just going to have to think differently if they're going to succeed in this new world. So hybrid is the wave of the future, for example. Um, performance, I mean, you know, I mean, we're, we're all learning we're here on zoom right yes. Yes. we're all it, we had zoom before the pandemic but it was a small kind of thing and nobody really liked it that much well all of a sudden we now know that you can actually maintain close relationships through these little boxes on the screen Mm -hmm. we know that we can get our exercise programs here we know that we can i mean you know uh, the, so 
things have things are being rethought every minute and here's what i also know which is that change does not generally happen on a permanent way on its own people have to make it happen so it will be us through our intentioning and through working together that we'll be able to change the larger systems that will enable hopefully the next generation of women to be able to to move forward in their careers without some of the obstacles that you and I have had to deal with. Yes. And I love the optimism that you offer in your in your book, especially, um, you know, intentionally. Do you ever get discouraged, though, thinking maybe progress isn't happening swiftly enough or there simply aren't enough women in office? I mean, how do you personally stay focused and optimistic? Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful question, Catherine, and I do get asked it from time to time. I think I have the advantage of having the long view because I have been doing this a long time. And so I have been able to see that in the aggregate, the moves are forward. I think as Martin Luther King said, the, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. And sometimes I think, how long is that arm going to be? And how long do we have to wait? But ultimately, I have the benefit of being able to see that long-term trajectory, that things are better with each generation. And I think that young girls grow up today knowing that they can do or be whatever they want to do or be. The challenge then is to remove the remaining obstacles to them so that they really can uh, succeed in whatever they choose, however they want to bring their gifts to the world. They should be able to do that. Well, since we've been talking about intentioning, which I absolutely love, I love the word, what's your best advice for becoming more uh, of a person who approaches each day intentioning to make it a better one? Mm -hmm. whether it's you know the world around them or themselves you know how can women best accomplish that well just to to make sure that people can get all everything i know about this to answer this question if you want to go to my website you can go to gloriafelt.com forward slash intentioning and on that page of my website you can download a workbook that will help you with specific exercises that are in the book and and really literally will give you techniques and tools that you can use every single day you yourself brought up one of the most important ones which is setting your intention for the day and the way i do that um i'm not going to tell you i do it every day but i i do it often which is i have well it's actually high tech here i use my phone Mm -hmm. I use the notes function in my phone and I write down no more than three intentions for that day. And those intentions are not my to do list. They are how I want to be and what I want to have accomplished by the end of the day. So it's it's kind of bigger picture. So just doing that writing down, and then at the end, at the end of the day, looking back at it and seeing did I do that? was i like that like was did i be like i thought i wanted to be did i do what i thought i wanted to do and very important don't beat yourself up if you don't mm -hmm. just roll it over to the next day <laughs> and, that's exactly what yeah. i do <laughs> <laughs> don't beat yourself up because we women are really good sometimes at beating ourselves up if we don't get everything done perfectly so just a simple intentions journal like that can help quite a bit but there are i have a lot of other exercises that you can do and i really encourage people to they're, they're in they're in the book but it's also neatly put into a a workbook that you can use and write these things down and and over time it's the incremental things that you do that make you an intentional woman that make you intentioning in your life i love it gloria i just think that's a very valuable tool for all of us to be doing on a regular basis or you know i can relate to you maybe not every day but most days and and learning how to just give ourselves that grace, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and we don't have to accomplish everything in one day. We can roll it over. And sometimes I've been rolling things over for two weeks. But That's right. That's right. That's right. Eventually, it, it, you know, it, it right. ends up manifesting itself. So Gloria, thank you. Thank you for writing this book. It's really important. Well, thank you.
thank you. Thank you so much. I it, it's been it's been absolutely a labor of love and, and I probably wouldn't have finished it had it not been for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Because all the time I wasn't on planes, all the time I wasn't getting dressed to go to meetings. I had no excuses anymore. I had mm -hmm. to finish the book. We've learned to appreciate the little things, <laughs> certainly. Always a yes. pleasure, Gloria. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for what you continue to do to elevate and empower women to be the best versions of themselves, even in the toughest of times. We appreciate you. And I want to remind people that your new book is called Intentioning Sex, Power, Pandemics, and How Women Will Take the Lead for Everyone's Good. Gloria, thank you. You can learn more about Gloria by going to our website, thewomenseye.com. And I also want to let you know that The Women's Eye has two books. The first is called 20 Women Changemakers. You can shop for it wherever you buy books and at changemakersbook.com. And our newest book, 20 Women Storytellers, is out right now. And you can find more about that at womenstorytellersbook.com. That's going to do it for this episode of the Women's Eye podcast. I thank you so much for joining me. And to my guest, Gloria Felt, thank you again. I'm Catherine Anaya. Until next time, remember, it's the world as we see it. <laughs>